very excited to have Dr. Dana Weiss. Dana was on before, and Dana is the author of the Invisible String Workbook. And Dana was on before with Patrice Karst, the author of the Invisible String. And this has been after that video, I went out and I got all the other books, and I have been using Dana's book, and it's just an amazing book that complements the invisible string that has been a go-to. And I believe I just heard that they just sold over a million copies of the book of the invisible string. Is that right, Dana? Yeah, the invisible string just hit over a million copies. And I think what's amazing about that is that didn't happen overnight. She's been, and I think she shared on the last video, Patrice has been working on this book and having this book for over 10 years now. Um, so this is a book that has been out there and kind of underground a little bit and, you know, just in the last year or so got picked up by a publisher, but even before the bigger publishers picked it up, she did so much generous work, was going to schools, talking to kids, reading the book out all over the place. So yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. And, you know, I was so excited when I found out about your book because it's just, we, we use the invisible strings for everything. And especially, I feel like lately, my clients, myself, my family, just it's like these strings everywhere, losses everywhere, trying to repair deaths everywhere. And like, how, how are we holding the space? And everybody has, there are different ways of grieving and different ways of handling loss. And this is such a beautiful way. I mean, your, your interventions are just an instrument to, to, to hold that space. And to like, I, I don't know, I feel like it's almost a hug to the heart of how are we holding the space and this way to be able to heal for all of us without saying, this is how we grieve, right? This is what we need to do because everybody has their own process, but being able to hold that space and have these type of interventions that are so beautiful and you're gonna be teaching them to us today, some of them, and all the sensory components. And especially when we're working with children who are sensory learners and we're doing, you know, we call it this bottom up approach to learning rather than this cognitive piece of how does it make you feel that we're going so much deeper. And those are some of the things I love so much about your your workbook so maybe dana you can before starting about the workbook just to tell us a little bit about about you and and how this all came about so we talked about it a little bit on the last call but we'll talk more from my perspective about what happened um so i've been doing this work pretty much since i got out of high school and maybe even during high school i was doing work with attachment I did a lot of volunteer work when I was younger. I did a lot of coaching, went to, went to college, got out, immediately started working in social services, doing case management stuff, and then ended up at my first residential program. Um, so moved to Hollywood, right? Thought I would have, so I don't know what I thought I was gonna be doing. I moved out on a whim, didn't even wanna be in like the business. Knew I always wanted to write, but I ended up at a residential and in some ways fell in love with the kids. Right. So I worked with younger kids at that time. I was doing rehab therapy. So that's like the recreation groups and all that stuff. And I just started because it was so creative. We were doing all different kinds of sports and groups. I just fell in love with that, found out about expressive therapies and art therapies and said, I know what I want to do in my life. And it's this. Um, and so then really started my trajectory of working with attachment disruptions and really looking at what the impact of having those is and how we were doing some things right and some things we were really getting wrong. Um, and so went to get my master's. I got my master's in marriage and family therapy and art therapy at Loyola Marymount, um, which was a great experience, so much fun, learned so much more. And I was like, I'll never work in residential again. I just want to do something easier. And then the only place that hired me after I got my master's was another residential program for adolescents. And um, I remember calling my family and pretty much like crying, like, no, I'll be locked in 24 hours a day again. Um, but I did it and I, I loved it. I couldn't leave. I loved the youth I worked with. Um, again, so creative. Um, and these kids that 
had really been given up on in so many ways, like to the level of care I work in now and worked in then was kind of the highest in the state. And they had, there's this horrible system where you kind of fail up. Um, so you've had multiple failures, multiple disruptions in your attachments. And even when the families were involved, there was a lot of pain and a lot of um, hurt. And so I think like really, I hadn't even learned about the invisible string yet at this point, but I think that really sent my trajectory of like knowing that something like this was in my future because I just did so much work around it and just kept notes of things we were doing. And then I got licensed and I got my job here as director of training. I now work at a residential center in Torrance, um, also for adolescents. And again, we're the highest level in the state. So we have a psychiatric hospital, we have a secure group home, and then a non-public school on site. And I do training and supervision for all of them. And um, my first week, they handed me a gigantic textbook um, on the model called ARC Attachment Regulation and um, Competency. And they said, you're going to train this to the building. And I was like, yeah, no, that's not happening. I don't even know what this model is. Will you send me to a training? They're like, we interviewed you, you know it, like it's in your heart, you're good. And I was like, I don't think that's how training works. Like, I think you actually need to know what you're talking about. Um, well, I was out with a friend and found the invisible string. And I just said, this is such a beautiful way to describe something that is so hard to describe. And I, I kind of walked away from the book and I was like, oh, it's great, but do I really need it? And then I looked at my friend and I didn't even talk. She was like, what are you doing? I walked away, I went and got the book and I was like, read this. I think this is my training. And from there, I just kept reading it and sharing it and reading it and sharing it. And I think I shared on the last call that um, one of, we were using it with so many of our clients and it was so powerful. I used it with a client whose son would come to visit and she just didn't know what to do with him when they came and her and I would read the book and practice and then she would borrow the book and read it to him. Um, other clients were writing poems about the book. Like there's just these amazing things that were happening in our program as we used it. And a group that I was training along with a couple of the clients were like, isn't her like email in the back of the book? Can't you email her and see like if she likes what we're doing? <laughs> and I was like, sure, I'll email. Okay. <laughs> so I emailed her, sent her this long, beautiful, um, really story about what we've been doing with it, what I had been doing with it. And um, we had a client who wanted to do an art piece for her and give it to her and another client that wanted to do a poem and I couldn't send it. Um, I would have to bring it to her in person and she agreed to meet with me and that's where this was born. And I think one of the things she said was that my work for almost at this point had been 15 years in attachment and the way I used the book really spoke to her as like the mission of what she wants to do. Mm -hmm. And the more I learned about her and the more I knew about her, she's just, she never wants anyone to feel alone. Like she wants everyone, all ages to know that they're never alone. Yeah. And that's how I got involved. And then it was like a six year process of us writing this book together, going back and forth, cutting stuff out, um, me writing things, her saying, you missed this, let's add this activity in. And it was just a lot of fun. I enlisted a lot of people to practice them, to talk about how their experience was all the way from parents to clinicians. Um, to like neuroscientists, to like anyone in my life that I could make do an activity. I was like, do this and tell me what you think about it. <laughs> Amazing. Can you show us the book? Yeah. So this is the Invisible String Workbook. So this is what it looks like. It's um, available and it should not be any more than $12. If someone is selling you more, we don't even, Patrice and I, uh, this is her I agree with it, but this is her thing. Like, even if we, you buy it from us and we sign it for you and send it, that the only thing that should be added might be shipping and handling, but it should be no more than what it's really worth. Um, because we don't want to, that's not, we don't want to make money off people in that way. Like we just want people to feel connected and whatever gets them. And that's one of the things that the publishers and us felt really strongly about too, is like making it at a price that people could afford. So not mm -hmm. making this book that was like super expensive that, and that's one of the reasons there's no color really on the inside of the book. It was like price point. We wanted to make it beautiful and great, but also accessible. Um, that was a really big part of it. Like we wanted to make it accessible to people. 
Um, and this was actually, they had never done a workbook before at the publisher. <laughs> so this was a challenge, the poor editor. <laughs> and I were like back and forth a million times because they had never done a workbook. And I wrote it thinking with adolescence in my head. And they're like, but we're a children's publisher. And I'm like, but I work with adolescents. <laughs> so luckily they gave a little bit, it is marketed for children, but they gave a little bit to allow us to make it so it really could be anyone could use it. And we've heard back from adults who have used it for their own healing. Um, you know, one of the other things we did with it was really try to make sure that anyone could pick it up and use it. Um, I outside of my title, we didn't want art therapy, play therapy, any therapy words in here. This is not a therapy book. This is a workbook that goes along that anyone could pick up and use and do. Um, so we really wanted it to be at kind of that base level where then if you're a therapist, if you're a play therapist, if you're an art therapist, if you're a group facilitator, if you're a really creative teacher, you could take it and make it your own. You know, you could see an activity that seems really simple in here and say, oh, I know how I could do that activity. That would be awesome in a sand tray and do it, right? So the idea was that we just gave that base level of kind of like anyone could go from here and then your imagination, you take it where you want to. Great. Awesome. So do you want to introduce a couple of your favorites to us today? Yes, I would love to. So trying to think about a way to give a few different examples. So it's really, I was doing my doctorate for expressive therapies at the time I was, I was writing my dissertation at the time I was doing this book. My dissertation is on self-injury. So I feel like this book was my balance of, I was diving into the world of self-injury and looking at artwork around that and doing that a lot. So I feel like this book was like my salvation <laughs> where I was balancing between these two worlds the whole time. So we tried to make it really expressive and have all different ways to introduce this. So we'll start with a couple icebreakers. Um, and one of the things I like to do if I'm in supervision or if I'm doing the activities with anyone, um, I like to do the activity and then kind of talk about what we liked and maybe didn't like about the activity or how maybe it would work better for us. So I don't always do this in all groups and things like that with the youth but they always know they have the opportunity to tell me if they don't like something and they are very honest with me and they do not like everything. <laughs> um, and some of them love it. So I think that's also really good is sometimes I'll find some people like certain things and like other things don't really resonate well with them. So with no further ado, we'll do a few icebreakers and then maybe we can go through that process of just talking about, you know, what we liked and didn't like about um, the activities. All right, so first, we haven't done a lot of movement, so let's stand up or mm, standing up might be hard. Let's just get into a position where you can see our whole body a little bit. And if your string had a dance, that it could dance to connect to other people, what would it be? And so what we'll do first is I'll have you start and then you'll do your dance and then I'll do it with you. And then okay. I'll do my dance and you'll do it with me. I'm like already doing it, I guess. And then we'll do ours on our own while the other person does theirs. So kind of thinking about all the different ways we could be connected with someone. Okay. So I think what would your dance, dance or movement be? Would be like that, a little more of a butterfly because it's kind of the Ooh. representative that we'll talk about later, I guess. So that would be my dance. All right. And then I don't know why I'm feeling like a shimmy today. Sometimes my move changes. I don't know why. Sometimes the string does different movements. All right. So then you do your butterfly and I'll do my shimmy. All right. So that's the first one, just a fun movement based one. And these are from um, page 85, which is icebreaker activities. So there's a whole bunch of fun little ones to start a session, to start a, um, maybe to start a group, just for fun when you just need something to. All right, do you wanna talk about that one first or go to the next couple icebreakers and then talk about them? I think we can go through them all first. Okay, the next one. If your string was a song, what song would it be? So mine would be somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, 
that is so funny because I was thinking that same thing. I'm not lying. <laughs> but my version is the Hawaiian version. The Hawaiian version is my favorite version. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of. Of all songs, that that was the song. The Hawaiian version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. That just like sparks such joy as well as the beauty of the song, right? It's like it's, we're on the it's same. It's like a movie. mixture of joy and like sadness and like struggle. It's like all of those and things. Pure and beauty, pure beauty. Yeah. So yes. Wow. Well, that was easy. Interestingly, we had the same song. We did not plan that. Um, all right. So the last question that we'll do from the icebreakers um, is if your string had a color, what color would it be and why? Mm. Mine would be blue and yellow. I'm thinking of my mom who passed away five years ago, but my recent loss. And it's, I'll let everybody know that I literally, we started this and I said, Dana, I've been really emotional lately. I don't want to talk about death. I lost my grandmother butterfly just a couple of months ago and it's been extra hard, but it's, but I'm being brave. So if I get teary eyed and vulnerable with you guys, you'll understand why. But blue and yellow were always my, mother's and my grandmother's colors they were like the decorators they would just they would decorate my house my office anything and I'd always trust them but like blues and yellows were their colors so when now if if you ever came to my office or who's ever been to my office you'll see so much blue and yellow in my office because it's just such a representation of both my mom and my grandmother so those are those are those those are their colors that became my colors that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Blue is also my color. I feel like we're very synergetic and connected today. Um, blue has always been my color. My um, When I do art, um, my own art, um, blue girl art is like my signature and like my art. So um, blue has just always been, probably because I have blue eyes, people would just call me blue all the time. And blue is just a color that I love the ocean. I love the pool. I love the water. So I feel like blue is just like my calming color. It's my like serenity color. So blue would also be something that I'm hoping I'm sending out to the world and bringing back to myself. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so that was our icebreaker section. So why don't we think about which ones we liked most, what we liked about it. Maybe if there's anything that, um, I don't necessarily want to say what we didn't like about it, but maybe we would change to make more personal for ourselves, like a way we can envision it, us using it, it depending on the clients we're working with. Well, I or our own children, if it's your children you're doing it with. <laughs> I thought the movement was interesting. And um, also for you all to know that I actually took the Invisible String Workshop at the Expressive Therapy Summit. And I, I was going to say, in, I guess maybe it was the LA one, but we were online that Dana taught. So I went through some of these activities before, which I loved. But the, the string one, at first I felt like I was just stretching, like I just wanted to get closer and I wanted to reach them. And then it like moved into, I'm going to get emotional, it moved into this butterfly of like, I can't reach them, but my mother, uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow was my mom's favorite song. And she always said that we would be connected by rainbows and butterflies and the butterflies would be, um, butterflies visiting would be her way of showing up and checking in on us. So it went from this me trying to reach and my arms not being long enough to like the butterfly, which is so much more of a calming, right? feel of the butterflies fluttering some of it's not coming right the fluttering of butterflies in our belly then the reaching to to not quite making it if that makes sense so that's kind of what was going on yeah. in my mind when how how the movement just changed and the butterfly like that movement felt really it felt very safe to me that's beautiful and I think that's also such a great example of how even what seems like maybe the simplest question could lead someone so deep and so far. And, you know, that's something we try and talk about throughout the book is like, just be aware, like any, any simple question can just like 
trigger a memory, trigger a moment, just be asked in a certain place. And um, whereas maybe 20 people can answer the question without really much response, more than having fun with it, you get that 11th person who, well, where I work, maybe throws the book back in your face um, because they're just not in a place for that. And I think going with that and honoring that and, you know, thinking about that, even with one um, set of clients, we tried to do a group using the book and two groups were amazing, loved it. We're so excited about the book. And one group cursed out the group leader and mm. said, how could you read us about a book about moms loving their children? Mm. And then she tried to take it to themselves. Well, are you connected with yourself? And um, they're like, no, bitch, we're not. And we were like, oh, that's not what we expected you to say about this beautiful book. And so we finally had to take it to animals. And mm -hmm. because we have a, a bunny rabbit outside, that's our like house bunny. It's like our residential bunny and the kids help take care of it and they love him. And when we started talking about animals and what animals need and how we're connected to animals, the conversation was so gentle and they were like, well, of course that makes sense. So it was even sometimes tweaking it away from people who are dangerous and scary and have hurt us to more yes. about animals. I love that. I love how you shifted that because it's so much of what we do in the world of play therapy. And Dana, I know you're also moving to the world of play therapy of, you know, when we're looking at sand trays and we're looking at sand trays that don't have any people, these people in this world, but they're using animals because animals are so much safer to be able to use than, than, than having a person within the tray or a person within their play. So when we see kids or of all ages using animals, it really creates so much more safety and connection. So I love that you use it um, with the invisible string. I think that's beautiful. All right, you ready for another one? Okay. Okay, so I think we probably only have time for one more. So we're gonna do this a couple quick ways um, okay. just for fun. So this is gonna be more of an art one. We're gonna do one and you could, there's some instructions in the book. This is called a piece of my heart and you can definitely follow them. Um, you can get a bigger piece of like, um, you can get any size paper really you want, like a cardstock or a poster board, a small one, a big one, depending on how many people you have. Um, we're just doing our own individual because we're not together right now. So I'm choosing a small one just for the sake of time. And what I will do on it first is just draw. So I'll show you what I'm doing and then you're gonna match. Just draw a simple heart. Oh, that's really light. Really light, but I really light. So I know what draw, heart and it's okay that it's light. So it's just a heart. I always have, I don't know, I always have broken lines down mine. But just draw a simple heart. Okay. And then I'm just gonna cut mine up into four. It's just me. So if I was in a group of people, I could cut it up to how many people are in the room. I could have mm -hmm. each person do their own. You could let people choose a piece. So now I've just cut it up into four pieces. The bigger it is, the more you need to mark on the back as you cut them off to make sure to get them back in the right order. And this is called a piece of my heart. And this is page. Oh, this is called Piece of My Heart Puzzle. And it's on page 44 of the workbook. So now that we have that, and you can use anything, um, I try and have people use the same materials when they have maybe less art skill or not as much because it's beautiful. You can see some of these actually behind me. I have one of an angry bear and one of a heart over here. So these are ones that have been done. This one I did with someone with a lot of art experience. And over there, you can see that it looks beautiful. It's much more just kind of plain, right? We used pastel with that oil pastel crayons and it was much more just simple kind of drawing the lines. So for this one, are you ready? Do you have yours cut up? Do you I have your am, heart? but I'm not very organized because I said I'm not in my office. I don't even have scissors, but you can I'm rip it. You can okay. rip it. It doesn't matter because we're gonna put it back together and we can glue it back. You might not be able to glue it, but if you have tape, you can tape it. The good thing about all these activities is we can just be as creative as possible. Okay. Okay. So now I know that you only have a pen because we talked about it. So I promised only to use a pen for mine as well. 
So now we're just gonna kind of outline your heart and maybe you can think about shapes or words um, or anything that you would wanna put in each heart. So you can just think about parts of yourself. You can think about people you love and put things they give to you or you give to them. Um, really any way you wanna use this, you could do it. We're just gonna take a little time. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. You can just go quick. If you have more time, you can take more time for it. And you've said if you do this with groups, everybody does a different part of the heart, right? To yeah, so I've done oh, I've done this for so many years. It's so much fun. I do a lot of my trauma-informed trainings, and this is one activity. And I've done it, uh, 300 would be big, but I've done it with like 50 to 60 people where I cut up like a big poster board and it does take, it's, it's a lot of front loading and after loading. Like it's a lot of work to like get all the pieces back and glue them back on. And then usually what I do in a group is um, we'll raffle it off. So we let everyone take pictures and someone wins it. Um, in group therapy, like with this one, each one of us did one, we did smaller ones. There was about five for for youth and then myself in the group and it was a great closing activity for us so we chose a bear we each chose instead of doing a heart we each chose like a different oh, I have these like monster um drawings that are really fun and they loved monsters in this group so we each drew a monster and then we all colored it in and then each one took their own home so you got to be a part of someone else's but then you also took your own home and we had a full like hour and a half for that group so we had the time if you use paint, you need a little more time to dry. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun to do it those ways. And I have to figure out how I, oh, it's upside down a little bit of mine. And the good thing is even when people have thought they messed up, um, you can still make it work. I think the, the only real mess up is if someone just totally throws their piece away and is like, no, usually I say, if you get stuck, let someone know to help you. Otherwise I leave it like it is. Like if they leave parts of it blank, if they, however they want to do it. I love this. And how I really love to do this um, is what an awesome way to have the family make a heart and rip it up. And then the whole family does this heart. I think this is going to be my new favorite, Dana, because I do so much with the scribble and, and, and ending even on telehealth with the heart. And to do this with them, I love that idea because I have the families make a heart together out of Play-Doh. And I love that they could do this. So thank oh, we you. have done this with, I actually had the, I had the honor they invited me to one of the reservations to do something on the invisible string with them. And each family was kind of in a group together. And we did one, every family did a heart together. And it was beautiful because even the two-year-old could scribble all over the heart. And then what they did is we put them together and they were like, we're framing this. And it was gorgeous because each person put what they add to the family. Amazing. And they all, and then when we glued it back together, it was great. Okay. So I'm going to, cause I do want to do the one online now because you just okay. talked about it and I know we only have so much time. So I am just going to do a couple little scribbles in here and then, okay. So I'm going to tape mine on just to show an example of how it would finish. And then if you're ready to maybe tape yours onto something or put yours together in some way, Darian, let me see if I can tape, show you guys. I don't know if you can, you can't really, it's hard to see. Um, but I have, you can't really see it well, but I have butterflies in one, connection, um, gratitude, love, and just some spirals connecting. So uh, it's a little hard to see because I don't have my tape or anything. <laughs> oh, wow. So this is a really simple one, no color. And we can see how that mm -hmm. can make such an exciting little piece, right? So whether it's a little piece and I have already this created, so I'll make this a card later and I'll probably add more color, or other things onto it, more shapes, but it's just because it's such a fun activity. So one way we could do it is I often will do just a PowerPoint slide. I use Zoom a lot for the groups I do on telehealth. 
um, or for my supervisions. Um, so I do this a lot in supervision, like I said at the beginning, where we'll do the activity and then talk about how we would use it for our clients, which clients it might work for, who it would work for, who it wouldn't work for, really being thoughtful about each activity and not just, you know, just doing them just to do them. So many are fun that we're going to want to do that way. But we could pull up a whiteboard. And then do the same thing. So we can make, I'll do a simple heart drawing. So we do a simple heart drawing. Sometimes I'll have this pre-done if I know we're going to do it. But I wanted to show this way. So this is just a whiteboard on Zoom. And then let's do this. Let's separate it into four parts. And then you do two and I'll do two. Um, so I'll let you make a mark on the ones that you would like to do. And this is a great closing activity. My groups that I did in telehealth with adults, actually, this was our closing activity. Um, we did this so everyone had a piece of it. I ended up having four people in my group. So we were able to each have a corner. All right. Okay. And the great thing about this is you have all these different options. So I'll go ahead and take the right top one. So we can do, you can do shapes. So interesting doing this all of a sudden, I feel like back regulated again, like just the calming of just even doing this just kind of slows me down a little bit. And the great thing is you can just use shapes or colors or anything, words. There's so many of these activities that can be done through telehealth, which is great. Those who have access to the whiteboard and it's, all of this can be done through telehealth just with paper as well with the kids and families. Uh, it takes a little more creativity. It's interesting because we wrote this book and it came out in 2019 and then the pandemic happened and I was already set up for all these conferences and I was like, wow. I had a plan to be in the room with people doing all these exciting activities where I brought all the materials you would need. And, you know, that's part of it is just having to be creative and be in the space and do whatever you can. Um, and that just showed also how much um, flexibility a lot of the activities have to do it differently. So I've done this, like I said, um, I have not done this with a family through telehealth. I've done it more in person, but um, I definitely did this as a closing activity for the group. And then if you go to the top of your annotate tool, you have that save button. So we were able to all save it. So they could save it to their private computer. I could save it to mine. Um, and it was this great way to connect with each other. Beautiful. And then we would always do a title. So usually how I do a title and I'm sure that this is in the book. I think I created this as I was doing these online where each one of us says a word um, that this represents for us as a whole together. And then we write it on our piece. 
So go ahead and add your word and then I'll add mine next. Okay. Go back to my annotate. Oh. So our title is Gratitude Connection. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, okay. So I've saved it. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing now so we can just finish up. Thank you for letting me share all that with you. Thank you. Those were wonderful ones. And they're just, they could be used for anything. <laughs> we're talking about interventions of love, interventions of connecting. And the invisible string of so many transitions and people that we're not right next to, but there are so many ways to be able to use this. And um, I'm so appreciative for you taking some time, Dana, today and uh, being with us. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Hopefully we'll be able to do more of these. I loved it. We have so many more fun things we could do together. Yes, we will. We should be doing more videos, more art therapy, more play therapy stuff and many things in the future. So I will post a link and feel free to check out Dr. Dana's book. It, it's wonderful and just has so, so many precious tools. So we are so appreciative of your book and of you, Dana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. See you Bye. next time. Okay.